It's been a while since I showed the ARM2 computer, so I thought I'd give an update on its progress. Last time I was checking that the RAM preload circuit was going to turn itself off properly after the preload was complete, and at the end of that video I hastily wired up a lot of control signals to the main ARM computer board. This is a temporary hookup with messy long looping wires. I tend to work this way when I'm not sure what I want to do in the long term. And when it's all working, I'll plan how to lay things out better on the breadboards and do a tidier job of it. Now let me show you where we are and what this does at the moment. With the power on at a low clock speed, you can see there that it's counting up through the addresses as the clock ticks, and that's the RAM preload circuit in action. Skipping forwards a bit, when that completes, the arm is taken out of reset mode and starts running the program. The first thing it does here is initialize the LCD, and you'll see this yellow LED pulsing each time a byte is written to the LCD. And it writes quite a few during this initialization period, so let's skip past that bit. And you can see that things have changed a bit now. The display went darker, and the bus is now looping through a different set of addresses. And this is the Mandelbrot calculation. It's quite distinctive because the program gets paused for quite a lot of clock cycles on specific addresses, and this is due to the multiply instructions in the code, which can take uh, 10 or more clock cycles to complete, I don't remember the right numbers, uh, and it depends on the numbers being multiplied how, how many cycles they take to complete. Eventually, at the end of the loop, it will send a pixel to the LCD, which shows up as two flashes on the yellow LED here. Uh, as it needs a 16 bits per pixel, it only has an 8-bit bus. We need to perform two separate write cycles to write a pixel. But there are quite a lot of iterations between the LED flashes, though, so, so let's speed up the clock more, and you might see the LED flashes a little more often now. However, what you won't see here is a nice clean Mandelbrot. Uh, the best I've seen so far is this one, which is mostly OK, but ever so slightly skewed. Um, more often, though, it's severely wrong, or just doesn't show up any image data at all. The problem is, although I had this working before from ROM, uh, I've been having a lot of trouble getting the LCD display to work again now that it's running from RAM. And in the process, I've changed the way the timing signals are sent to the LCD, as that's now unified with the way they work for the RAM. And I also tried out the LCD on an Arduino to see if that uh, weird white flashy lines bug still occurred there. And it didn't, which is good news, because it means we should be able to fix that on here as well. But that did mean there's one more thing which could have caused it to stop working on this project. So there are a lot of possible reasons why this could be failing to work properly now, from the RAM not getting preloaded properly, to some weird configuration issue caused by connecting to the Arduino, to maybe miswiring it when reinstalling it, and so on. I've been steadily working through eliminating these possibilities. It's not solved yet, but I did find a lot of mistakes along the way. Things like not connecting up the uh, address 0 and address 1 lines from the CPU at all, uh, which are now important uh, during byte read and write operations. Uh, I was mistakenly buffering the high address lines, which was causing the LCD to get chips selected on the wrong bus cycles. Um, and there was also an issue with the way I'd been forcing the RAM into write mode during the startup reset, which uh, led to some corruption later on because it was kind of still writing sometimes when it shouldn't be. So with a bunch of those things fixed, it was possible to get some form of display on the LCD, but not consistently. Um, and there's quite a bit of shearing going on, as you saw in the other image before. Uh, and this implies that, I think, randomly, the LCD is detecting extra write operations, uh, which means that all the pixels on a particular line get kind of shifted along one. And there's a few possible reasons why it would be detecting extra write operations, um, probably due to the new control logic circuit. And I think it's most likely due to ringing on the write enable line. So anyway, I have a good idea now as to what to check, and I'll be investigating that further with an oscilloscope or a logic analyzer or something uh, to see if it might be the cause. So hopefully I'll be able to get that fixed soon and have this working properly again. Something else I've done during this process to help with debugging is set up an Arduino Mega bus monitor, a bit like the ones that Benita used on the 6502 projects. I've been resisting this because of the inconvenience of having to wire up these 26-bit uh, and 32-bit buses but I bit the bullet because of my doubts about how well the RAM preload was working. And it was worth it because it helped me both identify some problems and then convince myself that the CPU and RAM are now behaving properly. Um, I won't generally be having it attached when I'm using the system because it can only work at very slow clock speeds, um, but it'll be handy to have as a backup when things go wrong again. Getting the RAM preload circuit hooked up and working was obviously a huge step here, uh, which I kind of just had to dive into. It wasn't something I could feasibly do in an incremental fashion. So with that came a lot of risk. 
but it's good to see light at the end of that tunnel and when I've got the LCD issue sorted out I'll take the time to refactor the circuit, tidy everything up and I'll probably make some diagnostic software tools such as a program to check the RAM preload worked correctly and maybe also to just stress test the RAM, make sure that the single byte writes and reads work and so on. And after that I should have a clear runway to do a lot of deeper, more exciting things, making use of the RAM, having a stack and not needing to reprogram four EEPROMs for every code change. So that's where things are, looking forward to getting all that sorted out, and I'll see you next time.